Hi, I'm Rob from Hobson. In fact, you're joining me live on YouTube uh, for probably what's going to be the worst and the most shambolic ever of these notoriously shambolic um, top 10 lists ever. I have been drinking for a good um, eight hours of different consistencies and levels. Um, I mean, I'm not expecting a hell of a lot of people to watch this live because I've not put any graphics out or anything like that. So and I've not done the thumbnail. I've not done my proper notes. All I've got is a scrag of a, on a fucking envelope. I'm going old school. We're going to go quite, um, quite um, lo-fi on this one. No can can. And I'll explain myself in a minute, but I, I will, I'm going to I'm going to crack up a beer open. But one thing you are going to get tonight is going to two motherfucking live beer reviews, and that's what everybody wanted, wasn't it? After come on, if you've been honest with yourself, that's what you wanted. So I've got um I, I will do a, a review of the other one, but I'm going to open this, which is called Thornbridge. It's got three diamonds. It's a collaboration with uh, Michaela Brew Pub down in London, I think I think it is. Um, so passion fruit IPA, seven percent ABV. Kindly given to me by the lovely James over at Thornbridge. So, big shout out to James. So, you are going to get a little review of this. You'll get a review of my As It Happens or oh, Beer of the Month. Got that. I will have to go and get that from the fridge at the appropriate moment to disappoint you all. So, let me pour this and then I'm going to explain myself. <laughs> so, that's what you do in YouTube. People start vlogs and then they explain their position on shit. Sorry for being a wank pot because I'm useless. That's essentially it. But anyway, let's have a little scan at this. I mean, um, low. I mean, as far as it's haze for days on the low end, uh, a brisk carbonation, pure white foam on top, colour wise, perfect yellow beer aroma. Yeah, I think they've done, actually. Passion fruit's a funny one. What? Who, who's eating much passion fruit these days? Are you? I'm not. But yeah, it has that general tropical. It's got a bit of Solero going on about it, mango. Got a bit of mango, got a bit of passion fruit. I'm going to start drinking, and I'll talk, talk, talk you through the flavour later on, but I just want to get drinking anyway, so cheers. If you're drinking now, live or after the fact. So, so I we in a bit of a funny situation regarding Jan July. I just kind of felt, I, I mean, I've been drinking. It's not stopped me. <laughs> it's, not, it's not stopped me. I'm in, a, I'm in a list. It's not stop me. Um, but I'd not really... Sorry, I realise I'm covering up the microphone. Um, I've kind of felt, to a certain degree, maybe I've not been wowed by a hell of a lot. I mean, I've had some good stuff, but I've not... Do you know, those moments that you search for, it's like, like... Oh, fucking hell. Oh, come on now. That's the moments you search for. That's the moments you hope for. Um, completely made, um, if I'm not getting the comments, sorry, I'll just put that on there, if, if there are any comments, and I, so I were a bit kind of, am I going to do one of these, as, as Johai let me down, and I don't think it has, but uh, I didn't want to go for the whole hog, I didn't want to do the can-cam, I know you love it, I know everybody loves can-cam, <laughs> I wanted to become a thing. And that's all about repetition. People love, on, love repetition on YouTube. So therefore, I was kind of, I wanted to do that. But I mean, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And um, you can't be a slave to these things. I can't be a slave to cam cam. I can be a slave to keeping those empty cans. And sometimes good beers in retrospect as well. It's like, hey, do you know what? I really do enjoy that. So I do have a list. I said normally I'd have a, I'd have a, I've had a ledger. I'd have a ledger. No. ABVs, all that good shit, and then we'd be jumping up and down with excitement as I it was untapped, which I am just typing in untapped dot com because um, we will do that because I will need it because I haven't got visual representation of most of these beers that you're going to be hearing about this evening. Um, no, it's not untapped. <laughs> it's not untapped dot com. I should buy that URL. Make myself some money. Come on, tap to your shit house. There we go. It is. I'll be no 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 w w w's on that some bitch. Anyway, we'll get to the flavors in the Thornbridge beer. But big thanks to James who handed it over at Manchester Craft Beer Festival, which I will talk about later. Um, but I want to just crack on with my scrolled list because I do have the backside is 
Manchester Craft Beer Festival. So, first one I'm going to say, which I don't have visual. Oh, no, let's pick a one with a visual representation. Let's start with a big motherfucker. Something that you might not aware of. And I just bought, actually, I, I shared a can of this on Thursday night. So it's fresh in my memory, even though I'd had a couple that night. And that was from Jester King. A rare non farmhousey beer from Jester King. A stout as well called Liquid Bake Sale. It's a Babka, Babka stout at 10.5% ABV. Cracking stuff. You kind of think, that's screaming out, it's pastry stout. But you know what? It's not pastry stout. And um, one of the things that um, Gavin, um, my, uh, my my friend, proprietor of the triangle where I bought this from, and sometimes boss, um, yeah, just sometimes, Gav, get a fucking handle, mate. <laughs> um, shared this, and it was um, it was excellent. I mean, he, he kind of said it was kind of like grown up patient. Stout. I'd say it's not even that. I'd say it's well, it's well done flavored stout. At the heart of it is a great stout, a lovely stout, which you mean you don't think of these kind of beers when you think of Jester King. And that is absolutely corking. Very little of it around in the UK. Look online at the moment. Very small amount available. I mean, between two shops, there were 12 cans, I think. I've been... I had a bit of one, and I bought another. There's another four. There's only one left in the shop. But it was lovely, like, lovely, rich, roasty... Um, start with, um, I mean, babka is, I think is a, a Jewish delicacy, it's um, like a plattered bread, so you do get that kind of slightly brioche kind of glazed bread thing going on. You do get something that heads towards dried fruits, um, uh, but not too, not too excessive in that sense. But and then you get kind of like more of a dark, dark chocolate. Don't, I mean, it's, I, I don't remember it being cherry. Gav was saying something about cherry. I think I said something a little bit more astute than cherry. So I don't think it went down that route, but it was a lovely kind of, maybe more licorice kind of trad style of Imperial style. But that was an absolute cork, a very nice beer. So, sip of beer for the for the drinking man. I've not been working today. What? Where, where are you? What are you drinking? Let's have a little. There we go. Craig H says, "Good evening, good evening, Saturday Night Live." Well, it's kind of my. I normally do this on a Sunday afternoon, but it, I, I plan to do it, and, and I probably got home a little bit later than I'd actually planned. Uh, but that's no bad thing. As I said, you're going to get a couple of beer reviews out of me tonight. You know, we're not just going straight up on the um, on all that shiz. But let's go over to you. Let's go over to um, Untapped because I know you love it. Bake sale, it's liquid bake sale, but let's go over to there. Are, yeah, I should probably put liquid in there because clearly, loads of American breweries have put liquid, put bakes. Oh, there it is. Right then, you buggers, share screen. You know, you love it. You know, this is why you've tuned in for a bit of live untapped viewing. I think this is, a, I think it's a stingy, but then. Oh, there's a couple of good things. I've said a couple of things I'm enjoying about this. So, um, 4.17, not bad. I think I think it's a little bit mean. So what do they say? We created the Imperial Style inspired by one of our favourite breads. We bake at Jester King Bakery, Babka. Blah, 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 blah. Here you go. You can read that. English East Rain. I think you get that from the... Uh, yeah, I definitely get that. Kirsch Weiser Vasa Brandy. I said, maybe I said something about that. very astute of me. Rum soaked licorice, bread pudding, kids' birthday cake frosting, tall house cookies from a wood fire oven, and Mexican cake ste steeped in vanilla beans. That's a beautiful description. I wish I'd have actually give it a bit more time. But yeah, so um, as you can see, so, far, so in total, um, 713 reviews. Unique. Oh, you know, you love it. It's the two numbers that everyone loves. One six six six, and the others something else. <laughs> the most entertaining numbers on YouTube. Glasses and smoke, burnt sugar, treacle, maybe some brioche on the finish. Yeah, I think you've got that, mate. Sweet um, molasses on the finish. I get a hint of banana on the finish too. Chocolatey, doughy, vanilla, sweet, big boozy, bitter, coffee, roasty, very bit. Oh. Very boozy with caramel and masks. I didn't think it was boozy. I thought it was a lovely, lovely, lovely beer. 
But you can see people are loving this, knocking around for it's bleh, bleh. Why do you like four and a half then, Wank Pot? Um, used to be in the US, US, or USA, I thought it said USA. <laughs> Perfect, sweet, sweet and summer drink at home. Does the important price stuff just for the cost? Not sure. This is great stuff. No, I think he does. I don't think I didn't feel like it was too expensive. There's a lot of people. It's been landed. It's landed in the UK this week. So there's a bunch of people in the UK drinking this, giving it good ratings. Saturday in the cabin, Brian S. There you go. So uh, people are clearly enjoying the old Babka Stout from um, from Jess King. Lovely stuff. As I said, lovely, lovely stuff. A couple more comments. Craig H says from Brewer London. Uh, was it really like you know we can uh, yes it was Craig. Uh, I'll maybe I'll talk about that in a bit actually. That might be another thing for me to talk about. So I'll talk about Manchester. And I'll talk about that. Um, yeah, it was my mate was meant to be going, uh, but he didn't in the end. It was just too close to a load of other things. Last week was Manchester Craft Beer Festival, and that next week's Hop City. So it just wasn't. It felt a little bit more, bit more like a commercial show. There's uh, some of the breweries, and there's a lot of pretty fucking ropey breweries going on there to be honest there's some good shit didn't realize the other term were there if it wasn't as much of an expense for me to do that I, it's an overnight really i'm being serious i mean uh i'd have to get a train i'd probably have to go to a hotel and then i'll be uh, drinking before and drinking afterwards so the free bit is nice but it probably wouldn't have been an option um and i'd love to hang around with it's always a pleasure to hang, hang out with craig but i saw craig last weekend i'm gonna see craig next weekend <laughs> See Craig more than I see my parents, <laughs> and um, it would have been cool to hang around with Rasco, even though he was pissed as a fart on Simon's stream. Um, it looked like some people, it like on Simon's stream, it looked like people had a fun time, but yeah, yeah. And we got um, our lovely Jake. Jake, he seems like you disappeared, mate. Where are you been? Apart from drinking Chester King and getting COVID. Evening, mate. Oh, mama. I love me some love and tapping. Oh, you're in the right place, buddy. If you want to chat after this, I'm all ears and slightly dripping mouth. Right, so yes, that was lovely. Let's give you let's give you a little rundown on the uh, this Thornbridge while I'm here. So three of diamonds, Thornbridge Cover Lab with it says Mickler Bath. I presume it's Mickler Brew Pub London. I'm just gonna say that because it's cooler. Um I said I, mean, I did the aroma, I did the appearance, that's a flavour wise. That's really nice. It's one of the best farmers beers I've had in a while, actually. It's got a nice softness, but it's got a nice clarity to it. Apricots. Definitely apricots. Um, orange, unfrozen orange ice pops. Do you know an ice pop? The weird long plastic thing. Got a bit of that going on. Passion fruit. I'm not one. I've had, I've had my fair, fair. I've had my fair, fair, fair share of passion fruit over the years, but I'm not a oracle in passion fruit. So. Um, Maybe I'm not going to be able to um, specify passion fruit, but it's nice. Lowish carbonation, which I'm surprised at for Farmbridge. But it's nice, and it's a nice one. I mean, I definitely recommend you checking it out. Absolutely. It's, it's, and not just because my lovely mate James from Farmbridge gave me this uh, Manchester, uh, Manchester Craft Beer Festival. Um, but it's nice. It is nice. I do have another beer from Farmbridge to review. You get a full review on that. It's a collab with Dea. Which was nice. Um, so, so that was the first. So that's the first one beer in. Fifteen minutes in, one beer down. It's gonna be a long. <laughs> it's gonna be a long haul. No, it's all right. I'll crack through these. Um, so, next up, I'm going Daya. Going Daya and Flock. Ever so, and we're we going back. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, calm down. We are going back to Untap. I know you were asking for it. Not the six million breweries who've um, had a beer called this, um, but I've had this a couple of times, maybe th maybe three times now, and I've really enjoyed this beer. Which is so it's Daya and um, oh, there we go. It's doing it. It's doing its thing. Daya and Flock. So Flock, a small brewery from towards kind of Craig's neck of the woods, kind of Margate. No, I'm not exposing Craig uh, for being a, a dirty southerner. <laughs> anything but um yeah so ever so which is 6.2 percent abv <clears throat> it's a clean and precise ipa i'm drinking juicy hops apparently 
We have friends from Flock. So it's four points area one. I think that's a little bit tight. I think it's a really it's a super drinkable. Um, and I think and I like Flock. I, I'm hoping to drink more of their beer at Hop City this coming weekend. Um, so featuring Galaxy Citra Rawaka, including Galaxy Dry Hop mid fermentation, lovely. Um, so yeah, I thought this was a cracker, a, a really drinkable, enjoyable IPA. As I, as I was saying earlier, I feel like I've not had these kind of like blow your mind IPAs. Um, but I've but I've had some really enjoyable beer. I think that's a big part of this. Like citrus, yeah, I think this is pretty good actually. Lee K, even though you're a, you're a tight ass bastard with your two point two five light citrus flavor, very thin, watery, especially for the strength. Oh, you can fucking do one straight out of Hearn's locker into my mouth. I wonder if that. I hope that's my mate Mark. Who was talking about Hearn? I hope it is. Um. Yeah, I think there's. I think people are being a bit tight on this one. You shitters. Leyland bagging booze, bagging booze, bagging booze. Bloody hell! People have, oh, what are you doing, you twat pot? Well, what are you fucking drinking out of your asshole? Sorry, sir, Steve J, but you drink it in like a cunt. <laughs> uh, and some aspiring day, and the aspiring day. Good this, yeah. Harry I. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair. I don't think it's not, I said it's not going to blow your head off. Kind of call it a day and make better, um, better IPA than that. But I enjoyed it and I've had it a bunch of times. There you go. And our lovely Jake did um, send a message around earlier this week um, saying he really enjoyed it. So, chef's kiss. That's the seal of approval. From our lovely Jake over in um, um, North um, South South Norfolk, uh, <laughs> and checking his reviews of some iconic iconic fucking Williams Brothers ales. Go and check them out on his channel that he dropped this week. Dropping it, dropping dropping that bomb on your mom. Fuck power alarms. Um, <laughs> I told you this was gonna be bad. Yeah, so that was good. About had a bunch of day. I right? had the. Um, do we need a new aircraft? I think a new batch of that. That was very nice. Um, anything else from Daya? I didn't bother with the Vernon Colab. It was a, like a triple West Coast IPA. I thought that just sounds like an accident waiting to happen. Billy Bragg reference for you morons out there. Mm -mm. But um, yeah, so that was really that was really good. Uh, next up, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go to Verdant. Yeah, the uh, Gary YouTube T-shirt. It's not real. It is. Well, it is. I bought it. I didn't start it. Um, I've had a load of really good beer from Verdant. Um, we and we and Oats are down there, but I, they didn't make they didn't make the cut. They didn't even make a honourable mention out the out of We and Oats. Vi ah, no, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you the video is coming. Even though I've re I've recorded so few reviews in the last couple of months, it is shocking to me and to you, I'm sure. Uh, but I enjoyed uh, We and Oats. You will, yeah, I recorded a video for that. Shock horror! Wow. But I've had a bunch of really nice beers from uh, Verdant this month. One being the last beer I had before I came home. Boom. Bloom. Latest batch of Bloom is absolutely cracking. Bloom strikes a really nice balance between kind of like cleaner West Coast drinking and lovely, juicy, lovely, 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 lovelies from the from the East Coast. So you're getting that kind of mad, mad juice fest, but you're also getting a bit of clarity and a bit of preciseness. Great beer. Always a pleasure to have Bloom, especially when it's tasting. As good as that is. Um, a bunch more. The, I'm gonna, I, I had the accompanying one of this, um, which is the one that made the list. There was a double IPA version of this, slightly different name. <laughs> Excuse me. Anything else I've had from Ferd this month? I draw a blank, but I've had a bunch of nice stuff from Ferd. But the one that makes the list is The End Is Always Near, which is a... Um, a suitable rhetoric to live your life by if you live in a depressive post apocalyptic existence that I do. No, I don't really. I'm all right actually. I'm all right at the moment. And we all have us we all have our all have our ups and downs, don't we? But you mean I think um but yeah no I'm 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 pretty good at the moment, I've gotta say. 
He says, holding my <laughs> back the tears. I'm not scared. I'm not afraid to cry. <laughs> but this is a lovely IPA at 6.5% ABV. You mean, a hey, sweet spot. 6, 6.5. That's my jam. Trademark. Matt from Massive Beer Reviews. This is, this, the end is always near. I love the post-apocalyptic kind of sentiment of the title. But I know I've got I've got physical representation, but I also do like to give you what you want, the lovely, lovely online untappage. Verdant, the, the end is always near. They did a double with a slightly different name, and that was banging as well. I was slightly put off by this, and I'll show you in a second, uh, because of its... Um, there we go. Because of its descriptor. Danky fruit. Fruity dank. Ganja, gooseberries, grapefruit, goodness. Bit piney, bit sweaty. I like it. I love the poetry of it. I love the silliness of it. But I don't think it was fully represented the bear. I thought it was juicier than this. I didn't, I didn't think it was fruit, fruity dank. I don't think it found it dank. I didn't find, find the kind of like skunky kind of like elements to it. The, the, kind of, the ganja. The way you do that, oh, whatever that is. Um, the gooseberries. When was the last time you saw a gooseberry? Yeah, exactly. Unless you've got an allotment, you've probably not seen a gooseberry for a while. But I enjoyed this. I found it soft, but I found, once again, I found it kind of precise. A bit more than what I'm drinking at the moment. But a lovely fruity treat. And um, just and just, just an enjoyable drink. I've had it a couple of times and really enjoyed it. So they're going 4.12. Once again, I mean, I'm consistent. I'm on low fours. Nothing's knocking me out off. As, as I said, nothing knocked my socks off. Somebody drinking a trembling madness at Lendl. Lovely. Back, I was back in the office for the first time this week. In over, in over a year and a half. That was kind of disappointing. Kind of okay. Kind of disappointing. Kind of <coughs> a waste of time. Not much drink. Not much uh, in the way of um, comments about this. And, uh, I, I spoke to a lovely chap today about Anthony Bardain. I just realised. I never chat to anybody about Bardain. He's the god of everything good. Damn, that's good. Go from Cottage Ryan's. That's Anthony P. I'm, I'm, yeah, I thought it was, it's a really enjoyable beer. Hopefully, I have a long. Hopefully, I have a little longer in the tank. Eh? Ollie B, what are you on about, lad? As in, like, oh, it's because oh, the end's near and all that business. No, I think it was just a really enjoyable, enjoyable beer. So let's take that one off. No, that one's done. That one's done. That one's done. Right, shitters. Another one with a bit more, uh, some very visual representation. It's, I had, if, you, if you can see, is there space there? Yeah, there's a space. Space, because I took this off my motherfucking backdrop. Because it felt like an important beer. Speed waste out. Can. Oh, oh. That's what happens when you fuck around with your elaborate backdrop. You've been drinking since two o'clock today, um, um, but it's it was it was <laughs> I fucked it, mate. I fucked it. I fucked it, mate. Right, let's get, oh, you bastard! Oh no, it went. It nearly went all wrong. I should brought some beer. I want to make sure that goes. Come on, stop fucking around now, Rob. Let's stop pissing around. And I'm not surprised that only three people's watching this shit show. No wonder I'm getting all these thumbs down on the fucking. Videos. Whoever's doing that, take a fucking long walk off a short pier. And I know who you are, you useless cunts. <laughs> By the way, yeah, there's people just randomly um, um, down thumbing down my like left left on a giant beer that's been viewed like eighty seven times. Yo, just get a fucking life. You know who they are. They're fucking parasites. Those people. You know that. You know who they are. You know who they're affiliated with. I'm going to chop his fucking balls off. <laughs> right then. So speed race down. Straight up. I've got, got a variant, but 
first time Becky had had Speedway Stout, so that was really it was always interesting. It was really enjoyable to try a beer with someone who's never had it before. Um, so that that's always that was always super cool. So he's got an alert. Requires your shutdown. He started. Oh fuck off, dickhead. Um, and it is great. It's a great beer. It's really refined. It's really simple. It is coffee forward, but it's not silly coffee forward. The base beer is iconic. It's the fucking quintessential American Imperial Stout. It's a great beer. It has that dryness. It has that coffee and chocolate. No caramel. It has that because it's drier finish. It's malty. It's roasted barley. It's all those type of things. It's a cracker. So always a pleasure. And I felt like it needed a representation. I've got such fond memories of going to Alesmith. Getting shot down by Pete, Peter Zion. When I, the owner, when I went for the handshake and he just walked away. Fucked me. <laughs> the twat. <laughs> this is going to be the most offensive episode of this um, stream, by the way. That's what happens. It is what it is. But yeah, so. Cracker. Scribble that off the list. Um, ooh, where are we going to go next? Where are we going to go next? I think I'm going to go to you, Chuck. No, to let's go on. Let's let's have a look at Untapped for Speedway Stout, which is just ridiculous because it's like one of the most iconic Imperial Stouts in the world. But let's have a look at it and see what some knobbers on Untapped have said about it. <coughs> Fucking hell, look at that. Total check-ins. 191,801. I don't think I checked it in once. Maybe I have. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. I never check. I never sign in with my account in this because I don't know my password. Unique check-ins. 140166. It's been checked in 555. That's an enjoyable number. Times per month. Um, and as you can see, 4.19 and near fucking two, right? A beer that can have nearly 200,000 check ins and be as high as that says everything you need to. I've had Speedway in various forms, in various qualities. Um, I've had, and I've got such memories of drinking Speedway in loads of different circumstances. Um, and it's just a really important beer for me, is this. Um, and it's absolutely banging. Let's see if we can see some recent reviews. Yeah, everybody's loving it. It's fucking Speedway. Yeah, all day. Speedway, all day. Where have you been all my life? Well, there you go, Marcus. You, your epiphany moment, Marcus L. Speedway is one of the best beers in the world. It's a simple beer. If you like coffee beers, it's one of the best. Because it's not, But it's not... It's not for me, it's an imperial stout, and it's a coffee stout secondary. Secondly, secondary, secondary. Remember that? Right? Um, so, I think it's just one of those things that nice, very strong. It's not a very strong pour. That's your Leon A. Your ignorance. It's a stout. It's not a pour. Oh, <laughs> I like this. Mia S. Not Aunt Jemima's. But still. Th Thick with plenty of flavour, easier than the Hawaiian. I don't know if I've had the Hawaiian. I just want to say the entertaining. That's an enjoyable speedway face. If you're drinking that, can't see. Anyway, but you mean speedway? It's, it's iconic. It's an amazing beer. Um, first, first bottle I ever got was from uh, my mate Richard Burhouse, who went on to found Magic Rock. He, the, he, he, those early days, he was doing an online shop called My Bro Tap, and he was trying to source some of the more high end stuff. And he, um, he was doing it some. Um, he was talking to a guy up in Scotland, and uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a long, convoluted story regarding that, because a lot of what those people went on to do was quite remarkable. Um, one of them being Bruce from um, Left Hand Giant. He was a lovely, lovely man. Um, and so Richard got me a bottle of this. I think he brought it back from um, probably from Phoenix when when his company, because Magic Rock is called Magic Rock because they used to, the the parent company owned by his parent, by his now by his brother and sister. I think 
or his dad founded in the 60s, was all about kind of semi, semi-precious semi stones. And um, so they were, people thought they were magic rocks. That's where the name came from. Richard, um, early, in the early days, would bring me stuff back from California and from and uh, from Phoenix, Arizona. I think that's where it came from. And I held on to that beer for fucking years, like nine years at least. And I, and then I eventually I got another bottle, probably through Brewdog, and I opened them both. And I should have never held on to it that long. But there was my naivety at that point in my kind of beer journey about kind of like aging beer and vintages and all this kind of shit, which I don't think is – I'm not that fussed about these days. I mean, it's quite fun sometimes, but most of the time, drink the beer when it – when you should, don't hold on to it. I mean, I, I know Simon posted, I watched the, these fucking reviews of Simon's um, 60-year-old bottles of Guinness and stuff, and it's not been looked after, even if it is, it just tastes like sherry because it's massively oxidised. I've had beer that's like fucking, I had a King Charles beer, whatever it was, and over 100 years old. It gave, it made me ill as fuck. It was just oxidised and shit and like sherry. It's just the way it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting dry. Twitching yakking. So, I'd say most beers, just drink them fresh, and definitely Speedway. Speedway Fresh is brilliant. Yeah, I drank it, I drank it at the brewery. I drank it at prob. I, I must have drunk it somewhere else. I'm sure I had it in a different bar in, um, in, 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 in San Diego. I would love to go back to San Diego. What a wonderful place. Uh, I'd love to go with my mate, thingy, my mate Jim. I haven't seen Jim for ages. He's the king of San Diego. It would be fun times. Um, and, yeah, go to go to Ocean Beach. Pete's Pot Ocean Beach. What a wonderful place. And, um, but yeah, and then, yeah, and drinking at the brewery. Drinking, uh, I think it was barrel aged. Look around on the, on, on the old tubes. Uh, hop scene, Speedway Stout. You'll see multiple reviews. Yeah, sat. Sat in the brewery. A younger, thinner version of this guy. Probably wear a black t-shirt, though. Um, some things don't change too much. And um, drinking, I think, yeah, I think it was a barrel-aged version. And then later that week, the wonderful Ryan from San Diego beer vlog, one of our, one of our friends who um, doesn't really re- review anymore, one of the best around, one of the best palates you'll ever meet. Incredible taster of beer. Very astute guy, really intelligent guy. And, um, yeah, I think he brought the Jamaican Blue Mountain. You pay a fucking lot of money for those variants. And I think I've had, <coughs> I think I had the Hawaiian one in, um, in Brewdog ones. Or the Mexican one, so a variant. And it was fine. But it wasn't amazing. But it's a speedway, uh, where are we going next? I'm going to... Uh, I'll keep, I'll, what I'll do, I'll stay on this side of the paper, and I'll go to my Manchester Craft Beer Festival, and then I'll finish on my Beer of the Month, because I actually have a can of it. To do give you a little review, live reviews. Next one, I'm going to say, it's from one of my favourites. If It won't be a week, I mean, it won't be a month if you didn't have a review. I mean, uh, me rabbiting on <laughs> about a beer from... Beak, one of my favourite UK breweries, and the beer in question is, let me do a little switcheroo, Cabot, I, I, I held off on this because it was expensive, I was a bit like, oh really, is it going to be, uh, uh, how good is it going to be, once again it's 4.19, It's not. I'm not breaching 4.2 yet, am I, see I told you, good but not fucking amazing. But this was really good, and it took me by surprise. I was a bit hesitant because it was it was an expensive beer. It was seven pound odd, slightly less than my staff discount. But it was an expensive beer. It was it was low, lovely. I just remember it being really kind of tropical and things like that. Um, I, I think people have been slightly tight. Yeah, I think Craig Craig H is slightly over the top. I wonder if that's actual Craig H who <coughs> was watching this earlier. That would be hell- that'd be wonderful, apart from Trembling Madness. Yeah, being back in the office, I mean, I used to go to Trembling Madness um, nearly every lunchtime, but the shop is just not what it used to be, and it's all online nowadays, so 
and I'm back in the back in New York, which kind of takes a, a bit of enjoyment out of those days back in New York. I've got to say, um, I have to do a bit of click and collect. I can hear the beat tap room calling soon, guys. Very soon. Stunning double IPA cats, stupid cats. Yeah. So yeah. So there you go. Um, the, the label's dog shit. I like the quality of their artwork sometimes. That's like it's been on like the fucking on paint or something. That is absolute dog shit. Is that? I love a, a nice, nice refined line on on a swooping line of like their artwork. They're not putting that on a t-shirt. What well, I'm going to buy for twenty five quid? And that's a fucking sure. It's lovely. Soft, bit dank, bit bitter, bit fruity, well balanced. It's not as good as Gur, but it's great bit. That's bullshit because Gur is really fucking bang average. I've not even bothered with Gur this time around. No, it's not. Missing the point, fella. Well, who's this? Who's this twonk? Andrew W. No. It's not as good as Gur. You're not as good as Andrew. Why? <laughs> there you go. But that was good. That was a good beer. And it took me by surprise. I've not kind of like been bowled over by um, Beak's offerings this, in the, recently, but as I said, I love a bit of Beak. I had the. Um, um, I've had some car range again. I've had, I had the Vian Lager, which was decent as well. Anyway, a couple, couple of the old. Um, um, Craig Age, not guilty. Sorry, Craig. Don't want to don't cast suspicions. Don't want to besmirch your good reputation. Um, but yes, I'm sure you're not the only <laughs> Craig with a surname starting with H. So, last last one from this side of the paper before the bit of the month. And it's a full can. Yes, I'm not going to drink it tonight. I kind of thought I was going to, but then I thought, <coughs> it's a bit excessive. Mm-mm-mm. And that is from De Meurs Lertle. That is my best day. Dutch accent, Thomas. If you ever see this, yeah, you know, you know, I can, you know, I'm crushing him, dude. <laughs> it's Willy Tonka. It's an Imperial Stout at um, a hulking 13% ABV. This version is the vanilla and chocolate version. This was really good. Had this on Wednesday when we went up to Triangle. Shared this. Me and Becky. It was very good. Um, the right side of silly. The right side of pastry stout. It's it makes you think it's gonna be more nuts than it is, but the at the heart of it is a damn good stout, a really fucking good stout. Uh, uh, I've had the original version, which is cinnamon and something. Previously, I'm not a mad fan of cinnamon. I love vanilla, love chocolate, obviously. <coughs> the coffee is from the talking is not enough lubrication. And by the way, before you jump to conclusions but it was yeah i thought it was really nice it was really good um i don't know if i love the label i, I know it's referencing but that don't change the thing oh look at that a little, little top hat with a with a wrench in it but yeah that was really good if you want to go the right side of pastry out you want to go a bit silly that was very nice indeed back to the old untapped willy tonk uh, don't just put that into your um, Google search. My get unwanted results. There's a multiple versions. Oh, oh, that's oh, it's coffee. Don't want that version. Sorry, just bear with me while well, you're having while well, I'm searching for the, the correct Willy. But yeah, obviously Tonka, because I love a bit of Tonka. I love the fragrance of a Tonka. If it's that one, no cinnamon. Do one. Oh, for fuck's sake! Why have you done so many versions? Billy Tonka, chocolate. Oh, I'm just, I'm just being lazy. I'm not just chocolate, vanilla. There we go. Here we go, you buggers. <laughs> I can't believe it. Watch, right? Watch this. Rating, 4.17. <laughs> As I told you, nothing's blowing my socks off, but it's all good shit. Um, near, it's 2,000 reviews of this. Um, everybody's enjoying it. It's about four. 
That's a bit stingy. Five, Wesley D in the place to be. Top top three, I think it'd been a little bit tight, but I understand. It's around four. It's around four. Still do good Imperial Stout. I love it rich with a right thickness. Classic Moose Little. <coughs> four and a half. We're rocking it. Yeah, some people have been a bit, a little bit tight. But I think it's a solid four, maybe slightly over. I like chocolate. I like coffee. Uh, I mean, I like, I like coffee. I like caramel. Yeah, anyway, so uh, I like vanilla. So if you're gonna get drop a big old stout on me with some good whack of vanilla in there, I think the half of it is a really clean stout. Um, I don't think you can go far wrong with that. I think it could be. Um, so that's definitely worth worth checking out as well. Lovely stuff. So. Sorry, I'm being mega weird tonight. Oh, I hope somebody, no one watches this for the first time and thinks, what the fuck is this bullshit? It's usually slightly better than this. Usually there's slightly less swearing, but everybody loves a swear, don't they? Come on. I know you do. I know I do. Let's have a swear. <laughs> so, here's Manchester Craft Beer Festival this last past weekend. And I, I had a trade ticket of uh, Disclosure. So I didn't, I didn't pay a penny. And my wonderful um, manager and good friend, Kevin, covered my trains and stuff. It just as it happened, there was a multiple kind of like financial things that were dropped on me at the end of the month, including by the fucking company that run this festival, who took £100 off me when the fuck he shouldn't have done. Um, let's move past that. Which I, it were also it were all free, so I like that. I think I, went in pre, I think pretty impartial. Uh, I could have just been like, oh, yeah, it's fucking ace. Yeah, it's free. Rawr! But um, I think I went in quite impartial. Uh, the experience of the festival, too many people. I mean, even from me. Yeah, I'm, I've, got, I've had both jabs. I'm really cautious. I'm just that kind of person anyway. T but too many people. It's a funny old festival as well. It's not a beery festival. You know, I'm not being elitist in that sense. I mean, everybody, I love people coming to the shop and just on that kind of a voyage of discovery, and I'm all for that. People just getting pissed, that's another thing. And I'm all I'm all for, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking ev beer evangelist, aren't I? That's what I do. It's one of my things in my grumpy way. Everybody, everyone of me, I want to know their story. I want to take them in a direction. I mean, I don't I know a bit more than a lot of people, so I like that. I like to kind of like, yeah, oh, come on, fucking hold me hand. Let's, let's, um, <laughs> pass, it's crazy. It's pass the I should fuck it. Yeah, if anybody's watching this channel and they're not over 18, they've got a problem. There's lots more entertaining things anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm all for that. I mean, I, I the queue for the toilet was massive, and the chap sat, stood next to me. He kind of pushed in a little bit. I thought, oh, I'll chat to him. He liked a bit. <coughs> His experience was quite low and stuff. I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I'm a bit low. I'm not sure about these kind of things. But go for it. You fucking paid. You paid. It's all in. It's like 50 quid. Just fucking try it. If you don't like it, just dump it. Go for it, and just you never know what you're going to discover, and that's the entire that's the fun of this shit. I mean, I know you um, you you tune into this channel, and you just get loads of um, imperial stout and IPAs, but I mean, it's that voyage of discovery. I mean, I'm sure you all have had that experience, where you're at like a fucking local camera festival or something, and just trying to find something which which kind of piques your interest, and like now in this. I, mean, I wouldn't do this and, and get excited about tasty ass beers if I still didn't have that within me. So I think it's quite um, important in that sense. So that be, to, to, this is why you're doing it. I mean, it's um, it's it, it, it's a, joy, a voyage of discovery. It's um, it's it's fun. It's exhilarating. It's there's a wonderful community aspect of this as well. And that's that's one of the wonderful things about this. I mean, it, it, on on that point, it was a real kind of like mixed crowd. It was quite a young crowd, not a beery crowd. And one of the things, I mean, it's because I'm a fucking annoying old fart. Um, and I, I quite like that it wasn't clicky because beer beer festivals can be a little bit clicky. But I do like to 
see some familiar faces and I bumped into some familiar faces, which were really nice. Um, Dave, who used to be over at Wylam, yeah, he's working for a hot merchant. It was lovely to see him. Chap from Newtown Park, lovely to have a chat. But I kind of got this impression. It's like normally everyone's like, oh, I'm amongst, amongst my peers and among, amongst all my mates. But it kind of felt a bit like, um, <coughs> excuse me, sip of, a, sip of beer for the, the talking man. I felt like um, it was like, oh, Sunday I know, Ace, let's talk. I want to talk to someone I know. It felt a little bit like that. Um, so, it, one thing I'd say about it the venue wasn't good, it was really noisy. Um, so, the one which we couldn't really chat, I was there with Gavin, uh, who's one of my closest friends, and then I met with the wonderful Craig. What a darling, to both of them, Craig and Adam. They, Craig from Craig Ken Bay Reviews, Adam Ms. Bees, you'll struggle to find a nicer pair of people in your entire life. Absolute, absolute stunners. Absolute lovely people. So, I'm fucking shouting in the rear. You don't, you don't want that. I mean, I said it earlier to, to a friend. Um, it's like, if a, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? If, if you drink a really good beer and there's no one else to fucking share it, tell how good it is. Is it actually any good? Because it's a communal experience. There's nothing better than having the same beer with somebody and it's going like, oh, he's all, oh fucking, like this. We yeah, have this. It's fucking good, isn't it? Jesus Christ, mate. Like, just take, it just takes you up to that next level, doesn't it? So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, and it lacked that. I'd say the range range was a bit meh. It's like a big bar, really. Everything was just like what's out. What's if you want to go to if you want to go to a, a, a decent bottle shop, beer shop. It's not bottles; it's mainly cans these days, isn't it? That's what's that's what you could get. It's just what's available. So you kind of like yeah, wasn't the most you want like ooh, got a Pokemon it all. I mean, you got to fucking catch them all, mate. One like that. So it was, it was, it was fun, um, but it was flawed. It wasn't. It was one. It was one of my favourite beer festivals. It's a real shame because I'd love to have spent that time with my friends in a better way, I guess. But it was. I mean, I can't complain. Cause it, it, it were all free. Um, and I'm, I'm no. I, well, maybe I'm a twat. Here we got a nice big comment from Lee W. Says, Hi Rob, I'm buzzing again. Been to two open days at Wild Child Brewery. Uh, another one coming up next month, plus an afternoon up at North Broom Spring. Well, it was fantastic. Cool. My mate Alex has been up there tonight as well. I'm going next Saturday afternoon to Springwell. But yeah, Springwell's great. I've not never been to Wild Child. I'm a bit. Mm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure about Wild Child beer. Maybe it's just not for me. But um, yeah, if you've had a good time, that's what it's all about, mate. But exactly, that's what it's all about. Good beer, bringing people together, all that kind of stuff. That's the that's that's the beauty of all this silliness. What beer did I just talk about? Oh, I've not done the thing yet. I've not. I actually done the beers. So first one up, as he start, as he moves to his untapped page and starts looking for it. Um. So nothing. I said not a hell of a lot. Blew my socks off. Um. But are these a memorable beers? So let's pop onto the old on tap again. It's from um, full, full circle. I'm off back up to Newcastle a couple of weeks. Always a fun time. Um, what are they saying? So six points. Oh, this is below four. Boo! This one-two punch of Citra Mosaic. Oh, it's a fucking classic combo. Oh, uh, calm down with the block capital, so. Amongst the yeah, blah, 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 this juice, Bob. <coughs> Sorry, I can't do it. It's fair, I can't scream it in the um, favorite, but I can't fight this. So, <coughs> why are you drinking beer by a campfire? All I can smell is fucking campfire. I hate campfires. Just don't forget, we are tenters. Not the intention of this beer is, but it was damn good. Are they, are they drinking it? Brew London. All right, okay, there you go. So, people are enjoying it. 
this is, I really enjoyed this. This is one of my IPA standouts. It made an impression on me. I couldn't tell you what it tastes like. Juicy. There you go. L and R T. Should be lunches. It was juicy. That's and there you go. I think the face says juicy. Should wait for Solvay Society. So it's just a fucking industry piss up, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's a proud face, Ryan. Oh, that's not even Ryan P. That's somebody else's, mate. But I really enjoy, I enjoy, I really enjoy this. De decent tropical IPA, crisp, dank. That, none of that makes sense. Shut up. You inconsistent verbiage is not welcome here. But I, f I found it really enjoyable, that. So that was nice. Next one. Because one of them you've heard about before. Live. Piping North. It was no so yes, I did have a North beer, which is a poor show for somebody. It's one of my local breweries. I can't even fucking read me writing. <laughs> Fusing. <laughs> I can see Frontier. Oh, they were fading from the uh, Yeah. I think it was Sam who was on the bar here. Love the guy. There you go, 4.6. We're back up. We're back up into the fours. You know me. Go me, go me, go me. <laughs> We'd love to... You know, tummies. Hitting you with another double IP. Well, I mean, fading from tears. Building sky high atop a recent release of Sea of Curve. All oh, right, okay. So it's, uh, it's based on that. Chewy, full of... What? Um, 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 Putus gullibility? Oh, for fuck's sake, that's just the worst writing ever. Fucking hell, that's just bullshit. But yeah, it's good beer. I just remember it being kind of like kind of tropical and enjoyable. Um, once again, I said, not blowing socks off, but it was good. I was just getting a little bit tired at this point at the festival, and it was a bit like, yeah. Nice double IPA, loads of flavour, nice sweetness, tasty stuff, and this is a venue, loving it. Yeah, it's a great venue, Springwell. I said go next week. Yeah, I think it's good beer. I said it's not going to turn your world upside down, but it was good. As I said, with a lot of these, it's just not amazing, but good fucking beer. Right then. Oh, final one from... Uh, I moved off of the, um, the old Untapped, didn't I, without giving you my final one from the festival. I like a visual representation. Remember at college, that's what I was all about. Just distract people by looking at something. Look at, look at the pretty pictures. Don't look at me. <clears throat> and it was the best art beer out of the festival. I, I could have had more. I didn't go to Picala. Uh, I didn't drink a hell of a lot of dark beer, <laughs> but I made sure I drank some plain dark beer from the one fantastic New Barnsbury. It is, it is one of the best dark beers I've had from the UK in quite some time, and it is great shit. We've done it. We've broken the 4.25. Because it is good shit. It's a seriously good beer, and I couldn't pass up the opportunity of drinking it on draft, even though we do have an up upcoming keg of it at the Triangle. <clears throat> but I work on a semi infrequent basis. <clears throat> but it's a great beer. And anybody, oh, oh, Rich D is drinking a brew dog. There you go. I know what. Yeah, Plymouth brew dog. I think that says a lot about more, more about you than it does about the beer, you fucking twonk. It's a great beer. Even better on draft. There you go, Matt. Just Matt. He's not even, he's not even the initial. He's fucking killing it. But it's a great beer. Everybody, else, exactly. Wow. That's what you do, you brood of drinking wank pop. <laughs> yeah, that chocolate. Oh, yeah, it's fucking banging. It's a great beer. It's a great beer. I think that's all I can say about that one. Anyway, I'm just going to have a little swig of this. Any comments and questions below? Do it now, because I'm just going to walk to the fridge and get my oh, beer of the month. Hang on. Hang on.
Hey, you glad me, um, my kitchen's not actually that far away. If you're watching this live, thank God bless you for sticking with this bullshit. I do appreciate it. Beer of the month. Imperial Stouts. Double IPAs, all that fancy shit. Oh, actually, Lucky Slurps from Verdon. That's the beer that I was thinking about earlier. That was nice. That's Cryopop. But in contrast, actually, I didn't even make this connection. There's just been... <laughs> I've been talking about Manchester Craft Beer Festival. My beer of the month is boom, boom, boom. Blow, wind, blow. From track. And it was brewed for Manchester Craft Beer Festival. I don't think it was fucking on when I had when I had a triple IPA and a the Rosa a fruited sour from um, from track when I was at the festival. Five percent ABV. I've not drunk one beer more than I've had this. This is an absolute corker. So it's a pale ale at five percent ABV, hopped to strata. I love it. I said I've not had it. Nothing more than this. And I've got my, I've got my track glass. No, it's me. I know it's my golf at last, but it's a track class. But yes, my beer of the month. My beer review. My beer review. So, colour wise, very pale. Very pale, kind of like golden yellow beer. A, f a good frothy top. Great firm on that. Clear white. Swell and sniff. Let's check out the aroma. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. All day long, mate, this one. Oh, that's lovely. Grapefruit, pineapple, big time. But grapefruit kind of keeps the pineapple from getting sticky and too, um, too prominent. <sighs> bit of hay. Bit of, maybe a hint of sea salt. I'm not review beers for ages. It feels like fucking hell. I'm going to think about this shit. It's got a, yeah, it's got minerality. It's got a, pr like a bite to it. It's just nice. It keeps, it keeps you coming back for more. Maybe a hint of lemon juice. It's great fruit and pineapple, big time. I think that's about it. Fragrant. It's quite floral, I'd say, in a lot of ways. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, let's dive in. Cheers, bit of the mouth. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> So I've gone a bit too Tim Westwood on that one. Blow in blow. From track, 5% ABV. Strata, strata pale ale. Mean, tasty beer. I'll tell you in a minute about this. Mm -mm. Ah, so good. Yeah, just as I left Triangle, um, a couple had come in. I think maybe first time uh, the guy was German. Was definitely up for fucking drinking some good lager, and his, his partner. She was, um, she was kind of like, um, she seemed a bit uncertain, a bit intimidated by the big selection and stuff. And and and, and Gav asked, "Oh, what do you normally drink?" She was like, "Oh, kind of like a Brewdog IPA." I'm like, "Okay." And I was just, I was walking up with beers. I was taking away, so I just went and grabbed a can of this. Actually, it was the other one, the other pe the, the sister mosaic pale. Um, forgot what it's called. I was like, there you go. <laughs> right, there you go. It's five percent. It's bags of flavour. It fucking pisses all over. <laughs> I did say pisses all over. It beats pants off brew dog. Um, I think track dude is great. I mean, I love half dome, which is lower ABV than this. You can you can tell a bit more malt character. It allows the hops to stand out a bit more prominently. It allows the hops to be a bit more prominent. Just like I allows them to put probably a lot more hops in there as well. So it's not, but it's not shredding you in, uh, inside out. But it's just so damn enjoyable and quaffable. We've had these insanely hot few weeks in the UK, especially that one week, which was just a fucking killer. And um, and this is just as this is this just this beer was the solution to a lot of my problems. Um, it's just a really enjoyable drink beer, really drinkable. Sometimes, kick-ass beer and stuff like this really grabs you. And, oh, yeah. I, I had a bunch of try. Oh, here's the other one. Here's the other one I was talking about. There you go. That's the one I, I suggested. 
which is called Say More is five percent ABV. Pale ale, and that and the that the that gold top was absolutely cracking. Um, meet me in the middle. That was absolutely banging. As was the green one. Good, good month of track. I love track, but I mean, no surprise there. But yeah, no. Big beer doesn't have to be all really bombastic and massively over the top to be impressive and it really stupidly enjoyable. And this is one of those beers. This is a beer that you'll start your session on. Maybe you'll duck in and out. You'll you'll come back to it later on. You can have a few of them. Flavors absolutely spanking. If you like Strata, for me, Strata kind of like straddles that kind of somewhere between those two um, flavor profiles of the tropical and the slightly more kind of piney um, old school West Coast. And I think it's an absolute cracking beer, beautifully made, and um, from from one of the best IPA brewing pe- hoppy pale bre- brewing breweries in the uk and that's um so yes it's beer of the month track blow wind blow five percent abv strata hopped pale ale brewed it for manchester craft beer festival that's completely co- coincidental but i thought it was an absolute corker but yes so hop city next weekend i'm sure during august Run down. There'll be lots of talk about. If I remember, it's a lot. It's the start of the month, and it'll be the end of the month by the time we get around to you guys. Thanks to everybody who's watched this live. Thanks to everybody who watches this after the fact. Sorry, you didn't get can cam tonight. Sorry, you didn't get the graphics. But you I mean sometimes you just gotta like drink for eight hours and then have a bit of a chin wag. Until next time, I'm Ruff from Hopzine. Check yourself before you wreck yourself.